Tonight, Kids in the Hall's Mark McKinney returns live in the clubhouse, talking favorite sketches of the new season, the greatest summer movies of all time, and the untold story of the head crusher. And speaking of crushing, how about crushing that subscribe button? Am I right? I'm sorry. It's up all night with Bob. Folks, it's happened again. The dog is squeaking a toy, and it's up all night with Bob. It's our summertime spectacular quarter year anniversary show, and it's not just a normal show. It's all the things I just said it was, but it's also this guy. Look, if I could just if I could if I could figure out how to Have cut you to him. My name. There he is, Mark <laughs> McKinney. Hey, the TV's kids in the hall is here. Happy quarter year, Rob. Hey, thanks. Listen, it has been a ride. It's uh, it's summertime. It's about a thousand degrees in the valley. We're in that little lull, right, between uh, Canada Day on the first. It's that weird thing, like you said. It's it's like it's between uh, Christmas and New Year's. That weird ghost time between two times we're supposed to be happy only. We're supposed to be nationally happy, I right. guess. In a, I and guess for you as a Canadian living in the states, you have, you have your. What, what, what do you celebrate? Do you well, celebrate you've also the first you've the experienced fourth? it. You've also you've also been in this scenario. Sometimes yeah. you just go on ahead and you celebrate both. But it's, it is. It is. There's that little hammock in between the Canada Day on the first, yeah. Fourth of July on the fourth, yeah. Obviously, and right. then and then that little time. It's like in between Christmas a and New Year's. Celebratory taint, if you will. <laughs> it's the celebrate. <laughs> we are currently in the celebratory taint. You know what? Let's just make that. It's the raw. It's the up all night with Bob's celebratory taint special. There you go. Um, welcome. You're here for a couple of reasons, eh? Because you're in town and you're a good friend, and you said you would. And God mm -hmm. bless you for being here. How's the mojito, by the, the mojito, way? The uh, mojito made. Can I say who made this? Oh uh, yeah, you absolutely can. Albert Schweitzer. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Noted philanthropist <laughs> and, and mixologist. Basement slave in this house. No. <laughs> Uh, it's your fine uh, lady Annie who made this, and it's freaking it's the it's the real deal. Speaking of celebrations, uh, Kids in the Hall last we spoke was just about to launch its uh, sort of sixth uh, season after twenty some odd years off the air, a good yeah. number of years. Yeah, <laughs> there's not a dog squeaking a toy, yeah. and now here we are. The show is is, is going it, banana crackers. Everybody loves it. Yeah. <laughs> is lifted and the kids are back. Guys, I know we should have cryogenically frozen our bodies. Who's financing this time? The devil again? Well, sort of. Amazon. Are you crazy? Oh, all hands on deck. And, and it really is just fantastic. How do you feel? I, I feel good. I, I didn't know uh, how it would be received. I, I, is that surprising? Because it's... I really didn't. I know I like some of my sketches. And and I thought it was pretty good. I like some of the other guys' sketches, but I didn't know. Um, I think the thing that people have said is that it feels like episode, season six. Like right. It has, it's kind of authentically just a, a good follow-on. And I think I think people I think people were also kind of intensely relieved that that there wasn't another reboot that had kind of blown it. You know what I mean? Like it just kind of like disappointed the fans and stuff. And and. Uh, it turns out our idea was simple, which was to just kind of do the show and, you know, because to me the kids works because it's a Scott piece and a, you know, a Dave and Kevin piece and then a Bruce piece and then some weird piece of mine. You know what I mean? It's the gumbo, yeah. the gumbo. I think I've yeah. used that before. The gumbo makes it work. You know, it's funny because until I met you, which was about maybe 15 years ago, I, I and I was a kid for huge Kids in the Hall fan. I was in university when the show was on and I was mm -hmm. just, you know, I couldn't get enough of it. It never even occurred to me until I until I until I met you, and then through you met a couple of the other guys a little bit. Um, but just just knowing you as different people, but also being able to watch the show and go, oh, this is a this is a Bruce piece, this is a Kevin piece, right. this is a Mark piece. It honestly, I don't know. As just as a viewer, you're sort of you're watching the Gestalt, I guess, and you're not really thinking about it. How's that for? You know, just because you're not on camera doesn't mean you can flip through your phone. No, I'm not. I, I want. I want because uh, you're gonna. You're gonna get. You're gonna hear uh, what Andy is up to. <laughs> oh, so you'll get some B-roll of Andy. I'm gonna get some B-roll of Andy. Oh, this is a good idea. It's actually. a really good idea because his ball got lost in the uh, blanket there. So a lot of the struggling. By the way, he's also uh, uh, tweaking my my carefully prepared key light because I'm self-conscious now about Tim, but oh wow really going at it usually usually Andy just sits in the side here and kind of you know mellows out and yeah. looks up at you admiringly yeah like other Andy side I, you know what happened is I feel like a certain someone just about 15 minutes ago made a remark that he had matured yeah and was <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and was, he understood that yeah he understood that to mean well yeah how about go f yourself <laughs> 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 
that's exactly what the attitude is yeah. right now. Yeah. All right. You were All saying. Right. So anyway, uh, what's your favorite Mark piece this year? Uh, it, it's either Flags of Mark or maybe this Tadley runner that I did. Uh, Tadley was a character I did on SNL. Tried to get it on forever. I was like, thrilled to see the return of Tadley. Well, yes. Uh, I, I'm not sure who else was, but um, <laughs> but that was when I, uh, you know, I I took it beyond uh, trying everyone's patience at SNL until finally Phil Hartman uh, said uh, he would do it. But anyway, I sort of reinvented it. Was Phil, him. No, but that's so Phil. It was Phil yeah. Hartman that championed that character. Championed that character. I got an ass one time. Now, hi, welcome to the Tadley Talk Show. I'm Tadley. And did you know that I'm an orphan, and my mother was an orphan, and her mother was blind? Yeah. You've killed someone while you were on marijuana, haven't you? No. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. Take that off. A little bit of that. Yeah. And then, and then the Flags of Mark thing was just, I don't know, I just love a good, in-your-face, strange idea. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the strangest thing. I know I when I when I when I was watching it with Annie, I was saying this is such a perfect mark a, a bet, and also it speaks, I think, to the experimental filmmaker you you kind of always wish you became. Yes, it was the first dream. That was that's what I wanted to be when I was eleven. Comedy came later. Feature films always always were kind of interesting. You you wanted to be, uh, uh, like tell me, give me a name. Like who were you looking at? Who were you watching? What were you watching that you wanted to be? Like was it Fellini? Was it? Uh... Yeah, it was probably something like that. It was something like like odd optical. Like even like some of Woody Allen mo movies later sort of like stole some of that style. I kind of dug. Oh, that. for sure. Mel Brooks, for sure. Yeah, people, and and then some obscure French co comedies you wouldn't have heard about that were kind of very. Kind of blue collary, working class, grungy, but super fun. Well, like, like what? what well, uh, get out your handkerchiefs, which is like uh, I'm not sure. It's a lot of people like experience it as a comedy. I've, lately, I've been going back and seeing a lot of like dark comedies that I really liked back in the day, and they're really dark. Like when you, <laughs> <laughs> like now. So how? Like when you were a teen, when you were in like university, or. or? Yeah, probably around then. That's right. When, yeah, isn't that when it sort of gets that under seems your skin? To, but yeah, when yeah. it gets under your skin. So what were you, like what like what contemporaneous stuff or like old stuff that was old then? I don't know. I guess Strange Love blew my mind, and that was kind of but that was kind of old then. I guess it must have been already. Um, one of our base commanders, he had a sort of well, he went a little funny in the head, you know, just a little funny and uh he went and did a silly thing well i'll tell you what he did he ordered his planes to attack your country uh, well let me finish dimitri stuff like the loved one which i rewatched recently it's funny i don't i don't have a great memory so i often i'll remember a film by the scene that kind of like really twisted my melon and and one of them Mr. Joy Boy, Rod Steiger's character, he is a mom who just sits in bed and eats and flips between television and commercials and she's really happy. And Mr. Joy Boy sits and like prepares food for mom yeah. <laughs> and he brings back the virginal object of affection that both he and the other guy, Rob, played by Robert Morse, are chasing. Right. Uh, but at one point, uh, uh, Robert Morse comes in to try and find uh, the object of affection, but the fridge has fallen over on mom and oh, that's all the right. food is on the kitchen floor. And uh, he tries to help her up, and she, she goes, no, no, just pass me the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, what's, what has surprised you about the new season of Kids that, that's kind of uh, taken off? And, and, and what, what is, the, is there a sketch uh, you, you would love to hear more talked about? And what you, is, there, is there a little nugget in there that maybe hasn't caught fire yet? No, because I think, I think it's uh, like uh, having gone through this, you know, it's not the first rodeo. Like the sketches that, like Head Crusher was, meh, 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 yes. but, but I love it when, you know, you, when years later people start to appreciate uh, different things. I was literally walking across Lincoln in, in, uh, in uh, Santa Monica there, uh, uh, coming from the art store, going to a mall. And this young guy and a friend, like uh, who I thought, oh, for sure they know me from Superstore. Right. And he named one of my favorite Kids in the Hall sketches. He said, "Oh, you did that guy with the mouse." And then he started quoting this sketch I uh, I did, which was a, 
Oh, and I started telling him way too much. Like, he didn't want to know. <laughs> I was so happy. I'm going, did you know that I based that on a movie called... And, you know... There was yeah. a makeup artist yeah, on the building. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, come back. There's more trivia for me to tell you, stranger. <laughs> you pushed my button. Yeah, God, that would have been sad. That would actually make a good movie. But this happened this week? This happened, like, two days ago, yeah. That's wild. Well, that's... No, I think that's fantastic. I think that's, uh, that's fantastic. But he literally named my favorite sketch from the original series, so... I'm trying to remember the mouse one. Is that which? It which? was a silly sketch. It's about a guy, uh, Tucker, who uh, who uh, discovers a mouse in his French loaf, <laughs> and <laughs> becomes obsessed with killing. It. And he ironically works at a uh, as a in a circus where he dresses up as a mouse, and people hurl heavy wooden blocks of cheese at him <laughs> to win prizes. <laughs> yeah. See, it's all it all it all wraps. Very carefully back in amongst itself. Yeah. Yeah. This sounds, uh, I feel, tell me, tell me if this is wrong. Of all of the kids, you have the most Monty Python-esque uh, love of the grotesque. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe, but, uh, but but I think that's not even a Python thing. Like who is it in Python who loves hacking off limbs? Is it is it idle? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know which. I don't know who that comes from. But the you know you or the 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 gushing blood or the or the like. I feel like the Mr. Creosote in in the meaning of life, uh, Terry uh, Terry. uh, That's Terry Jones. Jones under the fat suit doing just just being the most repulsive. So Olympic sized pools of vomit. Yeah, I, uh, that's a You're side, referring that's to a the side Shakespeare note. sketch. Yeah, I didn't know that we would wind up using a hundred gallons of blood, but it made absolute sense to do it. <laughs> and I kind of remember thinking of the day we were we were shooting it, kind of going, "Hey, I'm doing one of those sketches where you'll use a lot of bodily fluids." <laughs> right. I I don't know if I've ever done this before. It was kind of thrilling. This puts you in the pantheon with right up there with uh, Dan Aykroyd's Julia Child. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, sketch, Which I think right? is the ultimate because I mean he wobbles and passes out. That's the genius of that sketch, is it? <laughs> But I do think there's a there's a there's a, I think it's the finish to the to the flags of Mark uh, hmm. sketch. Is that the one that ends over, uh, in the in the? Oh, toilet? that was Assassin. Oh, it, was that yours as well? Yes, I mean, I'm that was up, mine. See, this is yours as well, which is also fair. But again, oh, that was so much fun. There's some extremity there. There's a there's a desire to do that because when that camera's coming over and you're expecting in the moment that right. it's going to be something silly and it's a giant piece. of <laughs> and you love that, and I. And there are a lot of people who wouldn't write that, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't write it. I would have thirty years ago uh, criticized anyone who wrote that. I, I, oh, I, really? You think I, that's a cheating? Maybe think- I would have. But the fun part was the tracking shot in is so slow, and we we had <laughs> we had we had we had money left over for special effects. So I have birds flying out of the toilet and geysers and noises, and then and then to come up over the top. <laughs> have the end spelt and shit surface and then a huge question mark of shit displace the end like i just that was that was for my friends and i think that's how we've already i think that's how we've always written kids all stuff. that was for you that was yeah. for you know what i mean yeah and and now of course i have to ask what is the scuttlebutt on season two? We do not know. At this moment in time, Rob, we are sitting here. The show's dropped. What is it? July. What is it? July something? I guess it's draw. It's it's been out now six weeks, and I guess the algorithm churns away. Right over there at Amazon, and we will find out one way or the other. Right. Yeah. Would you right. like a, maybe we can? Uh, I I can pre-tape two reactions. One yeah. to a cancellation <laughs> and one to a pickup. Let's do it. Hey, Mark, let me ask you this. What's uh, what's going on with the everybody wants to know what is going to happen? It, will there be a Kids in the Hall season seven? Oh, those mother... They blew uh, it, Rob. They Amazon. They blew it. They just... F- oh, the what a bunch of assholes. F- Next, go with the happy All right. right. Mark, uh, I, I have to ask, of course, it's the thing on everybody's mind. Uh, uh, well, what Will there be a Kids in the Hall Season 7? 
Oh, I think we may have some breaking news here in the clubhouse. I looking. can't hide it. I'm oh, so, gonna, so thrilled. Oh, that's so fabulous. Uh, I like to put my money in the Texaco. Well, I like to put it in the Gulf. Well, I put my money in my mattress. Well, I put my money in my wallet. You're boring me. I'm cutting your head. I'm cutting your head. Mark McKinney reveals everything about the head crusher, including his name. Yuval Tizik. How do we spell that? Uh, Y-U-V-A-L, Tizik, T-Y-Z-I-K-I-I-K, maybe? Okay. Has Yuval ever been married? Uh, no. Does Yuval have any children that he knows of? Uh, no. Uh, has Yuval ever spent time in prison? In a foreign country, yes. Ha does, does Yuval now, or has he ever owned an automobile? No. What kind of tipper is Yuval? Uh, does not tip. What is Yuval's favorite uh, movie? Whatever's on at 2 a.m. Uh, what is Yuval's favorite snack to eat while watching a movie? Uh, popcorn and newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does Yuval have any pets? Yes, but m he would call them pets. We would call them vermin. <laughs> <laughs> Has Yuval ever been on an airplane? Uh, yes, to come to Canada. It was there, Where is he from initially? I think... Uh, uh, Hungary, uh, uh, some shard of Yugoslavia, maybe. Yeah. Does he have any siblings? None that he's been in touch with recently. What was the happiest day of Yuval's life? Um, coming up with head crushing. <laughs> it was the happiest day of your life. Yeah. yeah. All the way to the bank. Yeah. Cha ching. <laughs> yes. Seventeen hundred dollars. <laughs> Canadian TV stardom. Yeah. This is a version of 20-ish questions. These are going to be 20-ish questions about summertime movies. Number one, uh, what is the name of Charles Martin Smith's character in American Graffiti? Charles Martin Smith. <laughs> You're not an American Graffiti fan? I'm a huge amount, but I have, I have a oh. terrible memory for names. Oh. I'm going to say Beeper. <laughs> Terry the Toad. Terry the Toad, okay. Terry I the Toad. I can see him. I can see his face. Yeah. yeah well, what are they searching for in the film Endless Summer? Not Endless Love. Endless nope. Summer. The documentary of sorts. Uh, I don't. Is no. this the Brooks Shields? I don't know. No, that's Endless Love, I think. Yeah. Or maybe... Uh, I don't know. The Blue I, don't know. I may not have seen Endless They're Summer. searching for the perfect wave. It's about surfers traveling, basically tra uh, okay. tra searching for the perfect wave yeah. and, tra and traveling around the globe so that they can s surf all year round. Right. Yes. Um, you're not going to believe this, but they're white guys. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's one for you. How much does Quint... I wrote these, by the way. It yeah. looks like I'm just picking these off the internet, but I, I wrote these myself this afternoon. How much does Quint want to kill the shark? A lot. Ballpark it. What do you figure Quint wants? How much does he ask at the town meeting, following, scratching his, his fingernails on the board? Right. Have you, when was the last time you saw $3,000. He asked for he asked for thousands of dollars over what they're willing to pay. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand. Ten thousand for me by myself. Right. For that to get the head. The head, the tail, the whole damn thing. Whole damn thing. Right. In National Lampoon's Vacation, who plays the security guard at Wally World, whom the Griswolds kidnap and force them to take on rides? Uh, Randy Quaid. <laughs> no. Uh, who? John Candy. John Candy. John I Candy. Yeah. In what state does Stand By Me take place? Oh, uh, that takes place in um, uh, Massachusetts. Oregon. Uh, yes. What is the name of the camp in Wet Hot American Summer? Uh, can't, God, I see. I should know this. I was at the table read for Wet Hot American Summer. You should be. It's a, it's remarkable that you are not in Wet Hot American Summer. I was actually. I was kind of. I read for a part. I don't know why I wound up. I remember I went to the reading and uh, 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 Mary Louise Parker was right there and yeah. You're kidding. What part were you reading for? I don't. I can't remember. Can't remember. Can't remember. It was Camp Firewood, by the way. Camp Firewood. Okay. But, okay, here's one for you. What? Why does Marilyn Monroe spend the night in Tom Mule's apartment in the Seven Year Itch? Because she's passed out. Yeah, it's uh, the air conditioning. He's got an air conditioner. Air, he's got an air conditioner. Oh, do you feel the breeze from the subway? Isn't it delicious? 
<laughs> Why does baby borrow money from her dad in Dirty Dancing? Uh, for an abortion. Boom! There you go. There's one. There you go. You got that one. Yeah. Uh, where does the summer of 42 take place? Uh, it takes place... Uh, uh, oh, it, on... Um, oh, um... Come on, off of Boston, uh, the the, uh, uh, the the beach community of uh, Narragansett, or where, where is it? Amagansett. Uh, it is a it is a uh, it is a popular location in Limerick. Limerick, Limerick, Ireland? No, 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 in uh, in uh, no in bo in in body Limerick. In body Limerick. <laughs> <laughs> body B A W D Y Limerick. It is it is it is well. It is. A, it appears. Where is body limerick on a globe. I want to see this. <laughs> it will, you, the name of this place will uh -huh. often body appear in, in, in a body. So it's limerick. in Massachusetts somewhere. It's on a beach. Think of the. Think of the. What is the first body? <laughs> what is the first dirty limerick that comes to mind? Oh, uh, there was uh, Nantucket. Thank you very much. Oh, you were hinting. For me I was hinting. Oh, I was helping okay. you. I was helping Nantucket. you. Nantucket. Okay, yes. Yeah. Well, let's see if you know this one. Who played Bernie in Weekend at Bernie's? It's a guy named Terry Kaiser. He's not even famous. Wow. I know, I know. Did what? you know that? Oh, I did know that. You did know that. No, because I reviewed it on our little... Uh, cable show at the time yeah. I think. the plot which they essentially revolves around uh, Andrew McCarthy Jonathan Silverman our two um, young up and coming yuppies hey there's an original twist <laughs> uh, with a boss played by Terry Kaiser who um, starts swinging business deals with them and invites them up to his place for the weekend but then <laughs> this is he, the knee slapper he dies on them yeah at what was the uh, this, is, this is when I, I just put this question together today doing my own math what's the final question average age what is the average age of the main cast members of Greece the main cast member. Oh, 40. <laughs> Wasn't 27. It? 27? But I mean... That was 40 back then. <laughs> it was. <laughs> well, Stocker Channing was like 33. Yeah, that's right. And... and uh, Famously, famously. It was, like, it was like Beach Blanket Bingo. It was like everyone was unbelievably old. But if you look at like Beach Blanket Bingo... But I want to well, surprise people. Ask me who the Prime Minister of Barbados was in 1968. Uh... Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to ask you one more question just sure. before you go. A random one off the top of my head. Just here. You know, like who was the who was the the prime minister of Barbados in 1968? In 1968. Well, yeah. See, let's say 68. Okay, that would be yeah. Errol Barrow then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good, good for you. It Thank was. You. It was indeed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. All right, well, that's the summer. There's your, um, There's our gosh, summer. when you think back on all the laughs we've had, folks, it's been, a, it's been an amazing <laughs> quarter year. And when I think <laughs> about the quarter year ahead, uh, I, I, you know, we're just going to keep, we're just going to keep on rocking in the free world. Am I right? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Look at me. I'm going to die soon. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're really channeling Joe Franklin. I <laughs> you, you that was his catchphrase. Yeah. Look at me. I think I'm going to die soon. Yeah, exactly. I think I'm going to die soon. Hey, now, thanks for watching. Please do hit that like and subscribe. It would, it would sure mean a lot. I hope you're having a great summer, everybody. Next week, Ron James, legendary Canadian comedian and all around great fella. He's got a new book out that's fantastic. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody.